So why don't we why don't we bring in our guests and uh, say what's up to everybody? Because we got a packed show today. Here's JD. Here's Devin. Hey hey hey. And we got our proper overlay going. There we go. Welcome, fellas, to the show. It's great to have you guys here. Now we're talking. Look at this. Yes. Welcome, guys. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, yeah Thanks, we, do, we don't mess around when it comes to production value. You know what I mean? You know, I've got to say, when you, you were talking about the heat and all that stuff, I mean, you were bringing the heat, Jimmy, with the... I'm a huge EDM fan, so I was grooving in the, you know, awesome, backstage man. kind of listening. But what a way to get your energy up and get everybody excited, pumped up for a really exhilarating talk about Ignite. Uh, I'm telling anyways. you, man. Thank you so much for that, JD. I really appreciate uh, that. Seriously. It's really cool. It's actually, I, I kind of jokingly talk about this quite a bit, that it's always been a bucket list to get on into the club. Only because you do the mixing at the beginning, and I feel like it's just a total vibe. Like, it's the, the coolest vibe, thing. vibe, man. I, so that's Gotta actually how, I, I don't want to spill the beans, but that's how Ignite came up. We all sat around one day, and we're like, hey, what can we do to get us onto into the club? Yeah. And, and then so we're like, shit, let's just build Ignite. And then maybe these guys will let us on. So here we are. Anyways. That's amazing. I love that story. <laughs> that right. me. Thank you so I, much. I, I, will, I, I will not dispute that, given that it's been said. But, you know, uh, I'll shut up and accept it. Awesome. <laughs> here. Yeah. No, that's uh, thank you for the compliment, man. We really appreciate it. Uh, you know, we, we take a lot of pride in what we do. I know it's a little different in the space, but we try to bring that, that energy that you're talking about and, you know, get everybody on the level and get excited. So it's um, fun. Yeah, but it's great to have you guys here. We got JD, we got Devin. Um, it is you guys' first time on the show. And so and that last. being said, um, can we get like just a little bit of background? Because I know we want to cover a lot of ground today. But if you guys could just kind of uh, tell us who you are, tell our, our listeners and viewers um, kind of where you come from and, and how you got to where you are now, that'd be awesome. Devin's a hell of a lot more interesting than I am. So I'll just ride his coattails if you want to go first, buddy. <laughs> Oh, we got. Oh, no unfortunately, we can't hear you, Devin. It sounds we like you're. Un oh, unmute, brother. Not bad. Yeah, go. I'm. Uh, I'm really just a software engineer here. Uh, came from a Web two software engineering background. Ended up at a blockchain uh, startup and really liked it. And uh, started a Web three engineering consulting shop called Aegis Studio before this. And uh, while we were doing that, uh, we were using a lot of these like infrastructure tools out there. So. Um, we needed something a little better for our purposes and our clients' purposes. So that's when we decided to create Nirvana Labs. It took us like two years uh, to get to this point, but uh, we launched like six months ago, and uh, it's been it's been going really well since. Awesome! Great to hear. There, there there's a, there's a lot. You're a pretty humble, dude, Devin. Um, maybe 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 we'll, maybe we'll get into some of his actual knowledge pretty soon, but. Yeah, uh, I, I'm, I'm super stoked to be on the call with the three of you because, uh, you know, they say surround yourself with people smarter than you and you become like them. Um, so that's my goal all the time is to try to find people like you smarter than me. But uh, nonetheless, uh, I've been in space for a while, investing in a lot of different stuff, um, advising and supporting projects since 2015, 2016. Uh, I'm going to spare everybody the long bio, but we've been here for a minute. Um, and then in 2019, decided to start Rome Blockchain Labs. Um, to do something adjacent to what Devin is building. Um, we also do infrastructure data, but more so for our own purposes, sure. um, for data visualization, Rome Terminal. Um, we have an algorithmic trading ecosystem or infrastructure uh, called Velux. Anyways, uh, fast forward a little bit to when Avalanche launched, they asked us to launch uh, a lending protocol. We had already received grants for Rome Blockchain Labs. Um, and they said, hey, can you, can you guys launch a lending protocol native borrow lend? And we said, yeah, sure. But if we're going to, how are we going to do it in a way that makes it sustainable? And, and what can we do to really make a mark and, and not just have this be like, Hey, Avalabs asked us to do something. Sure. <laughs> let's, let's see if we can make money off it. That, that definitely what actually quite the opposite. It's, it's not as, it's not as sexy as everybody thinks running borrow lend, but um, we've ended up, you know, building a, a pretty awesome product and a pretty awesome platform. And now it's just uh how do we keep adding on? How do we keep making it better and evolving and uh, creating more value? So that's where we're at. Awesome, guys. Amazing. Devin, do you mind just giving us a little bit about Nirvana Labs as well? You know, some of us obviously are aware as to what you guys are building, but I'm not sure if all of our audience knows. So it would be great to get an overview. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so Nirvana Labs is really a base layer infrastructure. I like to say like the layer zero. 
of uh, blockchain. So the actual cloud and servers that run the nodes, um, that's the, the service that we provide. Uh, so RPC nodes, validator nodes, um, just general use cloud VMs, uh, all of that is uh, offered through uh, Nirvana Cloud, Nirvana Labs, essentially the same thing. Um, how we're different than a lot of the competitors out there is instead of using like existing hyperscaler cloud solutions like AWS, GCP, Azure, we built out our own cloud, our own CDN, and uh, we do a lot of the things in-house that's enabled us to have a much higher uptime, much lower cost, and just in general, much better performance. Um, so we've, we've not only been moving uh, customers off of you know existing providers that are unhappy with the existing solutions, but we've also been moving customers off of AWS because we see a huge uh, you know footprint of AWS in, in the ecosystem. So we want to help decentralize uh, the ecosystem and also give developers a big support where it comes to um, you know, Web3 support in terms of a, a cloud developer or cloud provider that has actual Web3 support. Um, so that, that that's generally the service we're providing. Our value to the Avalanche ecosystem is that we run a lot of subnets. We've been running a lot of subnets for uh, many of the games in Avalanche, um, some of the indexers and DEXs as well. Um, so we'll, we'll be uh, doing a lot more subnet work uh in avalanche for a long time for what it's for what it's worth i'll, I'll give a shameless plug for you Devin. but uh, we've looked at a lot of data providers and infrastructure providers and uh nirvana labs definitely stands out so any, anybody that's looking for support on you know operating nodes you know securing data cloud infrastructure all of that stuff uh, i can definitely personally attest to uh what they're doing at nirvana labs is pretty awesome and, and, and just tried to say he was just a software engineer too. Yes, there is right. no just, just like just, 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 the, just the software just engineer the software in the house. Engineer. We're 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 gonna make that the new new uh, meme. Uh, <laughs> yeah. but, but Devin, you know, jokes aside. So just one clarification that I feel like I should ask: Are you primarily focused on providing these services for Web three, or are you doing more than Web three? Yeah, so it's it's primarily for Web three. Um, we're entirely you know focused on supporting specific blockchains and uh, decentralized storage. We have machine learning models as a, as a service, which um, RVL has been testing out, uh, uh, RVT, sorry, um, been testing out uh, in beta. I think that'll be coming out soon. Maybe JD can talk about it a little bit more, but um, yeah, we have all of these infrastructure services that are just catered towards building better dApps, building better protocols, um, and just improving the the entire ecosystem in general, just making it cheaper, easier to build. Um, that's the the base level is where we're focused there. Amazing, awesome. Uh, now that we have the initial descriptions out of the way, I think I should ask the million dollar question. Yes. What is Ignite? What does it do for me for for the ecosystem? Give us the spiel, guys. Let's hear it. I will start by saying exactly why Devin's even on the call and, and why it's important. And we share a common thesis. In, and I think we share this with many people, including yourselves um, in the Avalanche ecosystem, that um, subnets really will power the future of finance um, and gaming and many other things. But for me in particular, subnets really power the future of finance, both public and private permission networks. Um, I mean, there, there are other infrastructure, obviously we all know there's other layer ones and they all have different pros and cons, but I, I think, you know, from a holistic perspective, nothing in my opinion uh, comes close to the subnet infrastructure. And so that was why one of the reasons we said, hey, yeah, of course we wanna stake our claim and plant our flag here on Avalanche with Borrow Lend and eventually liquid staking. And now this is how ourselves and Nirvana Labs and others have come together to say, hey, what can we all do given the resources we have and the technologies we have to make the friction or to reduce the friction of deploying, managing and operating subnets as much as humanly possible. And so there, there's a whole bunch of different ways to do that um, where 
and I'll let Devin speak a little bit more to this, but obviously there's some infrastructure, right? There's some people that will want to operate nodes and some people that would rather just delegate and, and have, you know, liquid staking as, as their solution. Um, and there's pros and cons to both and advantages and disadvantages to both. Um, but we needed to make sure that, you know, we have, we have robust uh, infrastructure partners enter Devin et al. Uh, they also have some other products that we use. I think you mentioned this quickly, Devin. Really awesome, but I'll get, uh, we'll come back to that later. Ignite in and of itself. So the idea is currently right now, you need 2000 AVEX um, to spin up a validator. And again, there's, there's a few different theses on this. Generally speaking, you're looking at somewhere between seven to 10 validators if you want a meaningfully de decentralized uh, validator structure on your subnet at a minimum. And so as a new project, you're looking at, let's call it 10,000, or sorry, 20,000 AVEX. Uh, 20,000 AVEX today um, is a lot of money, uh, especially for a startup, which if anybody uh, watching the show right now is either involved in or has run a startup or even pays attention to their favorite projects, raising funds is not simple, especially today. Um, so coming up with an additional half a million dollars, plus or minus, for hardware you know, setup, and then deploying these nodes for a lot of teams, that in and of itself makes it impossible for them to consider launching on a subnet. And so we said, there's gotta be a way to make that better. Kind of how do we do that? And uh, there's a whole bunch of other, there's a whole bunch of other reasons for this, but of course this is probably the most obvious and major use case. And we said, hey, we have all of this liquid staked AVEX um, and the liquid staked AVEX of course is right now being delegated in a completely decentralized way um, to any existing validators that meet certain criteria. And we added VEG. Um, and, and so there's some ways to vote for different validators and some other things. Um, you can boost your, your likeliness to have delegations come to you. But that's not enough. We said, okay, how can we A, give our uh, liquid stakers more optionality? How can we give our chi holders more optionality? And how can we make this a lot more user-friendly? And so we said, okay, let's look at some different models on how we can help subsidize the amount of AVEX that's needed to start up a, to start up a validator. Still doing it in a, as decentralized way as, as feasibly possible. Liquid staking and staking in general will always have some minor points of centralization. Um, ours are strictly from a security perspective. I'm not gonna go into it, but it, it involves physical data centers in many countries. Um, and there's a whole bunch of coordination that has to happen. Liquid staking is, in my opinion, one of the largest single risk vectors to any ecosystem. So we wanted to make sure that we, A, reduce the friction and made onboarding a lot easier while not sacrificing security or any of those items or decentralization as much as possible. So somehow people smarter than me, um, I'm the mouthpiece, definitely not the smartest in the room and when it comes to our Becky team and, and the rest of our BL. But so people smarter than me, um, went through thousands of iterations, honestly, uh, modeling this thing. And, and we realized that um, very safely and very efficiently, we can reduce the uh, required amount of AVEX deposited by 90% to 200 AVEX. That's to begin with. Eventually, it's possible, and there's ways to do it safely, um, that we might require next to no AVEX, but rather chi stake instead. Um, and probably not the same economic value of chi state as AVAX state. So that's kind of in a nutshell. So what does that look like? So if I'm a new, if I'm a new product developer, if I'm an enterprise or an institution that is saying, hey, we'd love to kind of test this out. I mean, there, you, you kind of can't. You kind of can't test it without having validators, without being able to deploy this, this infrastructure to be able to play around with it. And so that uh, invariably is one of the biggest obstacles to, to uh, private adoption and of course, larger adoption from new protocols like you guys. I mean, I remember talking with you guys about uh, launching the subnet, what feels like, well, it probably was years ago now. Um, <laughs> In crypto time for sure. Actually, for real. It, feel, it feels like a lifetime ago. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, quite a while ago at this point. <laughs> but that, was, that was a real consideration, right? It's like, whoa, like where do we get the AVEX from? Do we want to run all the validators ourselves? Do we want third parties? And if so, where do those third parties come from? How do we keep them accountable? Like how many third parties do we need? Uh, so on and so forth. And so this is like, this is not a new challenge, but of course it's a big one. And so here we are, we're, we're making it so that, you know, uh, developers don't have to go through that same 
you know, uh, process that, that you guys did. I mean, in your case and, and in some other early projects case, we've been able to partner with larger validators to begin with, people that are already operating validators and so on. But that's obviously not scalable. It's not scalable in a meaningful way. I mean, of course, those validators would love to validate every subnet, but that's not. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you an actual personal story like that sure. exactly resonates with what you said. I actually had the privilege of helping a big conglomerate launch a subnet before Hyper SDK, shortly after the other, the initial first two subnets uh, for the Swimmer network and the DFK network came about, right? And their concern was very simple. They're like, we cannot hold these digital currencies as a part of our finances. We just can't. We love the blockchain tech. We love the application specific tech, but we can't. How do I do a subnet? And literally, there was no answer. Literally, there was no answer. I actually had to get the box and like stake it to their hardware so that they can run their POC. And it was quite painful for them for me for like we tried to find a solution that would work for them and they couldn't and this was a big company trying to run early in the subnet game build something that's legit that's used as a part of their company uh sort of infrastructure and showcase as a real subnet so far at the time they only had games right now we're at a better place, but they needed exactly something like Ignite where they could partner with an operator, maybe maybe even like a fee-based service. And I feel like it's finally happening. You know, uh, obviously Ignite is coming hopefully soon, which you know we're going to ask you when, as you can imagine. We're not going to ask you about an airdrop, but, but at least we'll ask the when. <laughs> okay. Uh, and, you know, we're big believers on application-specific subnets. You and I had... JD, you and I had a conversation on Twitter, like you said, 27 and a half years ago uh, about how we were launching our subnet. And, you know, we're, we're quite looking forward to it. We're a believer of this vision. So can you walk us through uh, how this will work? So if I'm a pure Web2 company, I want to move a key piece of functionality that I provide to my clients to an application specific subnet what do i do how do i do it through ignite yeah so that's a it's a really good question there's actually two there's many more than two but there's two really obvious kind of use cases one like you said you're a developer you're building a protocol you're a, a dev shop deploying something for a web 2 company whatever the case is um, currently a lot of the bd is on us so people would have to you would have to reach out um, Theoretically, you wouldn't have to. Theoretically, you can do all of this without our involvement. Um, and you'll, when you see the protocol, like when you see the platform, you'll understand. You can. This is self-service. Yeah, it doesn't hey, require. We're 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 at, we're at closed group here. You can give us the alpha, man. Don't hold yourself back. I feel like you're holding yourself a little bit back. So you know. Feel free to I, I, I will I will give you some alpha in the sense that um, it 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 will and is built to be standalone. So we don't, in theory, need any of us to be meaningfully involved. Um, although. Okay. I suspect that for the first probably dozen or more, um, it, it's going to be very white glove, which of course, obvi obviously we want to do also. We want to make sure yeah. that, yeah. you know, any any little any little challenges, we want to make sure we're there right away to, to help the, the users out and to sort that out. But that the, the first option, obviously, they would just go to Ignite, which will be on the Banky platform. For the record, it's, it's a Banky product, so it's not a separate product. Um, from Banky, so it'll be right on Banky, uh, the, the platform. Um, so that kind of does crush your hopes and dreams about airdrops, uh, <clears throat> at least in the near future. But okay. um, th there's, you know, what's really exciting about this, and, and maybe we can come to this in a minute, is, is some of the other yield opportunities, I think, um, or at least, um, well, validating subnets comes with some additional opportunity. But if, so again, to answer your question, if you're a developer, you would just come to uh, the protocol when it's launched, and in theory, you can spin up um, as many nodes as you think necessary. And I would argue that we've kind of got this theoretical range of somewhere between five and 10 for a, a meaningful uh, ecosystem. I know there's some technical justification for that, but um, in many ways, more is in fact better. Um, so this also opens up a lot more opportunity for um, creating more 
validators for your subnet if you need extra performance, if you need whatever, extra security, there's a million other things. But um, so that would be kind of the first way. They would come, they could you know, go through the process and the validators would be spun up and pointed towards their, um, towards their, their subnet once they deploy it, of course. Um, now there's some other use cases for this. Um, some other use cases could be individuals um, that aren't planning on spinning up a subnet, but would like to support different subnets if they have an elastic uh, validation structure. How does that happen? Is it just anybody that's validating mainnet gets to validate this or is there, yes, in theory, um, but what if they don't have enough assets to validate or to create a validator themselves? And so as you can imagine, I'm not gonna go through all the permutations of this, but as you can imagine, there's ways to, you can really lever the heck out of this uh, if you get a little creative, you can kind of turn it into your own mini uh, validator structure. I guess. You I mean, one thing, one thing that just occurred to me is, so essentially you're cutting the cost of validation by a factor of, let's say 90% or more, maybe even, right? Like obviously yeah. you guys are still working on it, but does it, that actually- It's 90% 90, 90 to begin with. It'll 90, launch at, it'll launch 90 at 90%. 90% to begin with. Okay. And it could be more in the future. And will that, will that stay at that level if, because one of the earliest- uh, actually, the only forum-related post I think I did uh, in the Avalanche ecosystem was, bro, a lot of my friends missed the boat with the yeah. ICO and the various others. You guys got to drop the validation minimum, right? 2000, you know, I don't know what happened to that conversation. I haven't asked this question in a while, but if that number comes down or increases, is that 90% 90, 90 factor of discounting going to stay or is that going to change? That's a good question. Um, depending on the, the answer is maybe. Um, and the reason I say maybe is because it depends how it changes. If it goes from 2000 to 1000, we can probably continue with 90%. If it goes from 2000 down to 100, um, AVEX, then that's maybe a, a little bit of a different story. Cause you do have to have some, of course, skin in the game, obviously. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, like I, I, I don't imagine you know anybody that has a protocol reducing the validation to a number that's that creates an economical incentive for an attack anyways. So that, so then, I mean, this is massive, right? This is so, huge. Yeah. What we're hoping, and this is a bit of a chicken and egg, cart and a horse. Who knows? Uh, what we're hoping is that this reduces the concern for a lot of new entrants sure. uh, to the the minimum stake for validators. Cause I think Avalabs as evidenced by the fact that they have not reduced it, even though people have been kicking, screaming, crying, pleading for months, years um, to reduce it, they still haven't. And I think that's because they have a pretty firm belief that that's the bare minimum um, amount required to, to achieve certain security level. And so I would assume, I don't know that. Um, we talked to them quite a bit, but obviously I'm not, <laughs> I'm not in their product roadmap um, in, in deep detail. So I, I don't know what their plan is, but I think this hopefully should reduce the need or concern because 200 AVEX, I mean, if we can't pull together 200 AVEX to, to you know, spin up a validator, okay, maybe we have other problems. Right, in, right, right, in, right, in, right. Until AVEX becomes... I don't know. Uh, no predictions, no financial advice. Yes. But if, if AVEX becomes a, a $500 a token or some nonsense, um, well, then it's a totally different story yet again. Right. I, I don't know about nonsense. May, maybe let's not call it nonsense. It may happen. It, but yes, it, current, it, current utilization. It will happen. It's just yes. a matter of when. Yes, <laughs> so yes exactly. What, it seems like nonsense right now because that's what? 25, 30x from here, but I guess that's not that right. crazy. Right. And, and I guess, okay, so we come to Ignite. We... <laughs> We, laughing, we, at, we, laughing at Nectar's comment here. <laughs> I, 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 did, I did mean 5,000. There you go. Right. Yeah, ne Nectar's only We know what you meant. We know what you It's all good. The chat knows does, you does not too. miss mistakes. We appreciate <laughs> that correction, Nectar. Thank you. Uh, so let's say I put together the chi that I need to get the number of nodes that I'd like. And then how do I actually put together the hardware? And is that maybe this is a better question for Devin? I feel like you know we didn't give him a chance to say say a lot. Is that through you guys and and how seamless it is, or like what's needed from an end user perspective there? Yeah, um, sure, I can take this one. Um, 
so basically to to run a validator you need a dedicated node so that you always have the same node id you're not switching around with an elastic uh, uh api gateway on top of like a network of nodes you need just a dedicated node id um mm -hmm. and what we recommend is running something with at least uh eight cpus and 16 gigs of ram um and it, the storage size, you know, grows as the Avalanche blockchain grows, obviously, and as your subnet grows. Um, so it's, I think, between two to three terabytes currently, the storage requirements for a basic uh, Avalanche node. So um, we have all of this stuff automated on our end where we can just spin that up for you within minutes. Um, as long as we have the Genesis file, really, that's what that's the biggest thing we need. Um, and then we give you the node ID. You can stake your tokens wherever you need. Um, so I guess and... what, I'm, what I'm hearing is it's flexible, meaning if I have the hardware, at which point I was running nodes on Raspberry Pi 4s, no longer apply, but let's say I have the hardware that you suggested, 8 core, 5 terabyte, or a few terabyte um, storage, I could direct the Avox to my hardware because you know Avalanche allows that. The Avox that gets staked does not leave the wallet essentially. Or I could come through your offering and actually single click get the infrastructure spun up and the node running. Is that correct? And I just control the configurations. Is that how it works? Yeah, exactly. And we're automating that uh, more as we go. So if you're familiar with Terraform, it's what uh, like AWS, AWS and GCP Terraform, yeah. uses to do infrastructure as code. We'll have an official Nirvana Cloud Terraform provider with direct Avalanche subnet support around one or two months. Uh, it'll be released and ready for public use. Um, so basically, if you're a developer, you can go through do that through the Terraform provider, but we'll also have um, a UI on our website dashboard where you can just do it through the UI, no code required. That way you just pick a region, you pick the size of the machine you want, and then you get a node ID that you can now stake Avalanche to. And that's the best part that, uh, about Avalanche, in my opinion, the, the external key store or the, the internal key store uh, that Ethereum has. Um, so I think that allows a lot more flexibility when it comes to validation because you don't have to worry about like non-custodial staking. Um, Avalanche kind of just takes care of it with the, the wallet mechanism. You just need the node ID. One quick, one yep, quick question I, I had for you, Devin, actually, um, and I believe we've talked about this, but it's probably worth noting. What about node updates? Do you manage that or does the user still manage it? Yeah, for sure. So... We have two flavors of uh, subnets uh, as a service that we've been selling. Um, so managed where we do everything uh, that's required and you don't have to, you know, SSH into the server ever. Um, and we have a SLA uptime guarantee. And then uh, with the other one is self-service where basically you SSH in, you upload the Genesis file yourself and you run the subnet, but you can also tack on Web3 support where we can help you with updates and make sure that things are up all the time. Um, so it's it's whatever team needs that way because some teams have their own devs that they want to have access to everything and they want to have um, you know just add-on support. And then some teams don't have dedicated DevOps devs for this and they just want us to handle it. So that's why we offer both. I think I think the one very uh, not discussed aspect of this is, you know, running a single node on your own is one thing, right? You running a single node is not such a big deal. You can run it, you can screw it up. The network will kick you out and you won't really do any harm other than yourself, right? When you come to the subnet side, though, if you're running an application that has clients on it, that has TVL on it, that has some real risk on it, if you mess that up, you know, you're in trouble, right? You're going to have monetary impact. You're going to have uptime impact, reputational impact, all that good stuff. I think one of the big aspects that people miss, application-specific chains are awesome, but the tech is very novel. There's a lot of nuances that people don't know. And just think about the security aspect, right? If you're a team 
that is an expert in building a game, picking this knowledge up is quite difficult and it takes time, right? Cybersecurity and crypto is a different field than traditional cyber cybersecurity even, right? So in that sense, one other reason other than the, you know, the fact that it's expensive for you know, uh, big institutions to dabble with expert providers is just this, right? Proper infrastructure, i.e. the hardware requirements, ability to bypass bootstraps or like, you know, upgrades. And then of course the security aspect in, in your solution, all of this would come basically built and ready to go. Right. That's an important um, distinction, Firestorm. Thanks for that. I think that's that's also something that kind of comes into how many validators are needed on a subnet. So that's one of the challenges with kind of the seven to 10 is that if three or four of them miss an update for and sometimes we have hot fixes and sometimes we have, you know, fairly interesting stuff happening because it's still blockchain tech is, is pretty novel. We don't always have a lot of uh, uh, heads up when something happens. You could, in fact, have a situation that, that you're discussing. Either the subnet just stops working. And so that's where I, I think theoretically, from a security perspective, seven to 10 is probably adequate. But from an operational perspective, I, I think this is another kind of incentive for us to say, hey, how can we help subnet operators open up a few more slots then? And how do we make that viable for third parties to come in and do that? And, and how do we become a part of that? Um, and make that a lot easier. So that's kind of where this came about. Um, I, I wanted to pick on Devin for just a second, though. There's a, I know the answer to this question, which is why I'm asking you, but there's a guy that asked a question in the chat yeah. that I think is really interesting. Um, can you provide bare metal and also SGX and, or are these machines VMs? Yeah, so uh, like we, I was saying before, we built our own bare metal cloud from all the way from bare metal to the CDN. So, Typically, we deploy virtual machines for our clients on top of our bare metal using our hypervisor. And the important part when running nodes is the disk speed. So at a minimum, we do 50,000 uh, IOPS, so input-output operations per second. But we can go all the way up to 500,000 or more if needed just with those virtual machines. But uh, some clients have really large requirements where they might need like a what we call an extreme size bare metal machine. And that can be up to 128 cores and two terabytes of just RAM. Um, and we can provision that out for whatever client in almost, uh, I think about 80% of our data center locations. So we have 35 locations right now. Um, hoping to expand more in uh, the US, uh, South America, Africa, and APAC regions uh, throughout the next two years. So we have a pretty good uh, schedule on getting the entire globe covered in Nirvana nodes and uh, Avalanche subnets. It's pretty neat also. Because, it's pretty neat also because then you can you can select your geolocation, which um, in some cases makes sense actually to have a, a distribution globally of, of where the nodes are located. Um, if you're concerned about speed in particular, um, I mean, the, the there's also the regulation angle, right? right. If the U.S. Sure. says you can't run a node in the U.S., having the ability to spin it up elsewhere, I think, is huge, right? I can imagine. So it, this is a funny, funny thing to say, but when well, you know people talk about theoretical decentralization a lot, but they forget that the practical centralization through AWS is a huge problem, right? When you uh, when you force AWS to shut down a bunch of nodes is when people are going to like wake up to this fact that people need to be diversified, especially if you don't live in the U.S., right? So well, in that sense, having that flexibility is super important in my opinion. Another example is Hetzner. I mean, you can't use Hetzner VMs at all anymore or any of their data center slots if you do anything with respect to blockchain at all. So wow. uh, that's a lot of that's a lot of international data center firepower um, and virtual that's machines. Weird. Yeah. Uh, that that has gone out of and, space. Jimmy and that's why we designed our service and cloud the way we did. We tried to use as little external services and tools as possible. Everything is either open source or proprietary and runs all in our infrastructure. So we're in the same data center as AWS is, but our cloud is specifically built for Web3 from day zero. And that's what we'll provide forever. Um, so they'll they'll never be uh, no you can't do any blockchain stuff on our cloud. Gotcha. 
JD, yeah. let me let me ask you more of a DGen question, right? Oh boy, I got a, I got a bunch of Avox, right? Uh, let's let's just say that let's, I do, right? Listen to this flex, one day, right? one day maybe, <laughs> but let's say, let's say you know, in, in this theoretical scenario, I have a lot of Avox, right? I can do a lot of things with them. And what does the economical angle from a, a Vox holder, you know, what does that look like? You know, why would I want to come and participate in Ignite? I think you touched on it earlier, but would be amazing if you can, you know, give us a little bit more on that. Yeah, we're, we're, we're trying to stay somewhat impartial um, on, on how it can be used. Although I'd be lying if I said we hadn't considered some of the degen angles and aspects of this, because at heart, I think we're all a little bit degen. Um, but I mean, so just for, for uh, priority sake, number one, the goal here is to streamline things for developers, for people that want to deploy subnets to make things more simple. That That's the ultimate and first top priority goal of this is, you know, people are looking to deploy subnets. How can we make that simpler as we've talked about for the last I don't know, 40 minutes or so. There are some kind of subordinate um, potential use cases of this. If you're an AVAX whale, uh, like Firestorm has just disclosed he is. Um, <laughs> th th there are some other ways to do this. And which one is better? We're, we're banking on some game theory. We're, we're banking on our VE, VEG structure plus our Ignite structure. And maybe we have something else coming out in 2023 that will add to that stack of potentiality for um, AVAX and Chi holders. But um, that was a, a very subtle alpha drop that I won't talk more about. But we, where's, we the, where's the sound it. effects? I sound it. effects. I yeah. caught it. We got, a, we oh, got a yeah. special alpha sound effect here. OK, let's do it. There you go. That's the alpha horn. That's the horn. There you go. Not, I don't have it set up right way anymore. Sorry, guys. Messed yeah, up remind, the alpha horn. It reminds me of one of those buses in Latin America that's always playing the music and then does the horn, yep. you know? Yep. Anyways, um, so th there's some other cases for it um, and, and we're trying to think as, as holistically as we can. So if you're an AVEX whale, you have a few options. Uh, one, you can spin up a single validator and have a whole bunch of delegation space on that one validator. Then you only have the cost of wanting, running one node. Um, and you can, using VEG, um, you, can, you can get pretty close to guaranteeing for a fairly cost-effective uh, process uh, a full node and you can make a pretty good amount of um, additional revenue off of that. So that's option one. Option two, uh, I'm a big fan of obviously liquid staking. Liquid staking is, is hugely advantageous for the obvious reasons that liquid staking exists. Um, capital efficiency frees up the equity and the assets. You can still be long AVAX. You can still be long subnets. You can still want to contribute to the security of the ecosystem, decentralization of the ecosystem, while at the same time freeing up the economic utility of those assets. Okay, that makes perfect sense. If you wanted to get really degen, you could liquid stake your AVEX, borrow AVEX against it uh, if the rates are appropriate, and then turn around and do boom this. But um, th so that's another option. You could do something similar to that if you're an AVEX whale. Um, again, stacking strategies is. Sure very common in portfolio management, obviously. And so, you know, there's some interesting ways to stack different strategies here. The whole point of composability is to enable this, uh, is to enable enable users without intermediaries like Goldman Sachs or these large, you know, investment banks of prehistoric ages. The, the, uh, the only thing the only thing we'll say is borrow your Avox on Banky, guys. <laughs> I'm just going to drop that in there, right? You can, you can drop it in there, but having said that, um, we, we've partnered closely with Aave too. Um, no, I know. I, so, I, I, SOVOX is on both. I know that. Yeah. It's on both. And, and Aave has been a huge support of our SOVOX markets. Uh, if I had to guess, I think that the borrow cap, uh, the caps are being raised. Oh, okay. Yes, because AVAX borrowing on the Aave is, I think, SOVOX. at its max. No, no, uh, even S regular regular AVAX borrowing. Because if I put my SOVOX in Aave, I can't borrow AVAX can't against borrow. it. Currently, I believe I haven't checked in a while, but I think that was the case a couple of days ago. Yeah, they're they're doing what we what we've done and what we would do, and that is, you know, just let's step wise into a new asset listing. Let's make sure we understand all of the risks associated with it, which of course are non-zero. Um, but yeah, so anyways, borrow from Banky. I would prefer that, of course, but you know, we are big fans of 
uh, of Ave as well. And also worth noting, um, since they're not on this call, but uh, we've had many conversations with you know Stephen and our friends at Google Pool. They're doing something kind of similar to this. Um, and so we've always said that no market will ever be healthy with a single provider of anything. Um, and so, although of course I'm biased to my solution, uh, we also feel that you know that there is there's a lot of merit in other things that are going on in the space, and and not just because you know we're building one thing that doesn't mean that we think that everything else sucks. It's just we have a vision, and and we're going to try to play it out. But anyways, um, so there's there's that strategy. The other one is is you might not be a whale per se, but you might have two thousand avx, and then the decision is. Okay, what do I do with my 2000 FX? Do I do one validator or do I go through Ignite if I happen to hold some chi and do 10 yeah. validators? Yeah. And if I do 10 validators, what is the probability that I could fill those up with delegations via VE chi? Um, and will that offset the cost of running the validators? Uh, answer, it should. Um, but I don't know that. I can't guarantee that because there's many things that can impact that. Um, and if that's the case, then everything else is gravy. Then your your yield for validating the subnet, which should, in theory, if the subnets want people to validate them, uh, be profitable. And so your profit, though, when we fill your node with the remaining AVEX that you need, obviously, um, the subnet yield goes back also to the original AVEX holders that are supplying the additional AVEX for you. So you're still only going to get 2000 AVEX worth of um, exposure to the subnet validation yourself, but you can maybe have 10 different nodes validating 10 different subnets. Whereas if you sure. had one node, that would never be feasible. Um, I think we, we yeah. had a question here. Can a user that use the node to also validate subnets like Dexalot? If they do, do the subnet rewards go to the user or the ignite protocol under this scenario it goes to the protocol and through the protocol goes to the avox providers right it's pro rata yeah so the the user that deposits the avex um because our our liquid staking product is a pooled product um once avex it's, it's like putting a whole bunch of one dollar bills into the bank um, the next guy that takes out money, like we don't trace where that $1 bill came from. Did it come from you, Jimmy, or did it come from Firestorm? Don't know. Don't really care. Uh, so similar here. So it becomes something that all uh, SFX holders get to, to participate in by indirectly allowing their AVEX potentially be exposed to this type of validation. What's really cool is that it, nothing actually ever comes into our care and control. Everything is programmatic, obviously. It's kind of the idea of it being on chain. Um, there are smart contracts. There is a structure that moves the assets to and fro, um, but it, it's very, very, very limited on what it can do. So the yield will go to the SFX protocol um, and to the node operator uh, pro rata. Good yeah, question. and JJ, to answer that question, or you said the, the node cost would go up. Um, the biggest cost in, in terms of running the node is the egress bandwidth fees, so networking fees. Um, so that means whenever you're sending data from your node out to other nodes in the network, you pay per gigabyte. Um, most clouds, like AWS, for example, charge eight cents per gigabyte in the US and even more in other regions. Um, we come in at one cent per gigabyte, so eight times less, uh, where it gives you a much bigger opportunity to make money. It, it makes a big difference, especially if you take yeah. a look at one node versus 10 nodes, your co node operation costs are nearly the same. Um, hence yeah, that's huge. Why, why we're big fans of what Devin and, and Co are working on. It's, it's a huge step up from what exists. My opinion. Yeah, for sure. Our chat's digging it too. Yeah, yeah, I'm seeing it. I'm seeing a lot the of chat. fire emojis, a lot of hundreds, you know. So, I mean, yeah, like the, it, it's it's actually a, a relatively simple product, but requires a lot of finesse to 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 make it work. And uh, the the number, like we've been thinking about this since prior to launching liquid staking, um, thinking about all the future iterations. Uh, no better time than a bear market to build. But uh, I mean, without without a meaningful liquid staking protocol that we have the resources um, to direct them to this Ignite platform, it would, it, it would be very difficult for us to, to scale up those assets. How do you incentivize their deposit otherwise? 
Um, what are you doing? Are, are, are we creating just for the purposes of Ignite? Are we creating a liquid staking asset? And then does that asset have a use case? How does it get on other lending protocols? Um, all of that was was very important to us. So we, we didn't want to launch any of it until we knew we could build the meaningful, uh, a meaningful enough composable, composable stack so that you can do all of these things. We can do all of these things with a high level of confidence. Anyways, all of that to say, um, this isn't the end. It's in fact, just the beginning. The last question before I, hand it before I hand it over to Jimmy. What's with the fire stuff, bro? As far as I know, Avalanche has been all, you know, ice slash snowman, blizzard. What's going on here? You're like breaking the loop here, buddy. We're melting the ice, brother. I mean, I'm all the, about fire. If you have a song of ice and fire, let's exactly. ignite this party, bro. Well, what's so, what's the what's the best way to get out of an avalanche? Light a you know, giant fire and melt that shit. So that's um, let's go. But if you liquid staking, that's why we had the flame. You know, if you melt ice, you get a liquid. I okay, do I do remember now. I realize uh, what that was. And, yes, and, yes, and so um, ignite um, is a bit of a play on that, but it's. Uh, it's also just to what we believe uh, it adds some gunpowder to the explosive nature of the subnet ecosystem. Love that. Agreed. Well, I think it's fire personally, firestorm. So in your face. Attaboy. Attaboy. So. <laughs> uh, I'm excited to hear that, you know, the, the beats on the way out, but uh, I don't know if you guys want to talk quickly about timeline. I'm sure. Yes, you actually, that yes was, we do want to yeah, talk about actually, timelines tomorrow. I assume then. So Devin and group, uh, they're 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 going already. Um, so anybody that you know wants to engage with Devin, please go ahead and do so. Uh, obviously, and and a lot of that will help in advance of Ignite. If you want to be one of the first users, if you are familiar with what Devin and or the other uh, potential uh, node as a service providers are offering, um, then you know then you're one step ahead. Uh, audits are have been completed and. All of the fixes have been submitted, some minor stuff. Um, just waiting on final final approval of that um, soon. Okay. I like I like summits for these kinds of things, so we'll see. There, okay. Oh, okay. All right. All right. There. Yeah, nice. yeah, interesting. Interesting. Interesting clue there. I won't be there. I won't be at the summit. I don't think. Oh, I can't. Yeah. I can't leave the U.S. currently, um, oh, wow. but okay. yeah, yeah, just working through some visa stuff. Sure. Can, can I, I, mine was expired, my passport, and I paid like a thousand dollars, and they renewed it in two two weeks. Yeah. Oh, this is a visa though. This is different. So I, I actually got it almost sorted, but not until May sixteenth. I have to yeah, fly. Visa, to visas are very <laughs> U.S. Whatever. Yeah, painful. Yeah. All but right. anyways, it's all good. So yeah, uh, I, you know, we're getting, we're getting pretty close. Um, I'm, Jimmy I'm, and Firestorm, are you guys heading out there too? Uh, I Firestorm, I don't know if you are. I, I will was, be there. You 100%. will be there. I, I won't be making it this year, um, but uh, maybe, maybe next year. Maybe you guys can get me a tra travel approval and I can be Axolotl or Dexolotl or whatever the hell oh, Hey. Hey, JD now Ackerman. there's an idea. The, the other JD that we know and love is the guy to talk to about that. Yeah, he's in the chat right now. Jonathan yeah. Ackerman. We need to talk <laughs> I, to JD. I'm kind, of, kind of joking. I don't, I don't know if they'll let me go through customs and security wearing... I mean, once you suit. become an axolotl, the whole visa situation goes away. It goes away. I mean, as far as I know. You're an you put on that costume. Global citizens. Okay. <laughs> Once you put on that costume, you're so you're so adorable. You're so cute and cuddly. They're not gonna they're not gonna hassle you. You know what I mean? You, you guys automatically get pre-check. Yeah. yeah, you're for sure pre-check. You yeah. don't even gotta take your yeah, shoes there you off. Go. There it is. You guys it's kill really. me. Like I, I absolutely like hats off. Go to Dexalot, uh, your guys' marketing department and the creative ingenuity, of course. Uh, but I mean the 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 boxcar races, the axolotl, all of them. It was Thank freaking you, amazing. Like I think I, didn't we collab on one of them? I think we did something. Yeah, well, yeah, a so, few of them actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did. And and it's just such a cool thing, like watching the drone footage. Anybody who hasn't checked that shit out, go to where is it on your YouTube or where does it live? Uh it's yeah, I think there's I think it's mainly on like Red Bull's YouTube. I don't think we're allowed to use a lot of that footage. But it's um so awesome. Like, but it's... uh in case you guys don't know what JD is talking about, we were part of the Red Bull soapbox race. Our mascot Dexter uh and a team in LA built a soapbox racing car and entered this race to kind of because you know avalanche they have their um 
they have their formula one you know we're just we're trying to be like the big guys you know what i mean so we had to start with the formula e. box race go from there you know formula e by the way formula e sorry excuse me last time i saw jd in person was during the formula e time I believe that was Avalanche it. House. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We uh, oh, we wow. got rain. We got rained out. It was beautiful. That's right. But that's you know, right. nothing is more friendly to the environment than a soapbox car because it doesn't that's even. True. Take, it doesn't take batteries. It doesn't take anything. You, you don't worry about any. Phone. Yeah, that's right. You just you know, not really. Pedal, just pedal and 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 use some um, gravity. It's amazing. Yeah. So there we go. That we we found we found transportation of the future. I think axolotls as drivers and soapbox cars. I mean, definitely, definitely. And axolotls that build subnets on top of it. He's a very smart axolotl. Um, but all that being said, guys, um, this this is awesome. Uh, chat, I hope we answered all your questions. Thanks to uh, Zero X Ninjas and Mr. Kit to you for the questions. Um, I got two real, real easy ones for you guys before you go. First, uh, please, will you come back and talk to us uh, more about Ignite as we get closer to the launch? Because you said soon, but I want to like when you got when when soon is ready. I want you guys back here. Can we do that? Can we like? Hell yeah, we can. Actually, what what would be really cool? Maybe Devin, I, I can't speak for you, but what would be really cool is we can actually probably show uh, when we get pretty close. I Yo. might be able to. Might be able to yes. be a Devin a live Ryan. demo. I love yes. live demo. Uh, yes, what what you can do with Devin and crew, and then how that plays into um, how that plays into Ignite. That'd be a lot of fun. Let's do it. I'm we would love down. that. We would love that. Hell yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. Um, and then my second question, since you did mention we are going to do some some music uh, to take us out at the end here. Um, and chat, just so you know, we are going to spin the wheel. If you want to win a Dexlot PFP, we are spinning the wheel still. So stay tuned for the keyword. I forgot to drop it on you earlier. My bad. Um, but guys, I get a music request from every one of our guests. I don't mean to put you on the spot too much. Um, our producer just, you know, he'll get me the songs if I don't already have them in, our, in my library. We got an EDM guru here. He's already on I his do EDM, Spotify. I'm, I'm a, I'm a rap guy song, by trade. You see, so, like exactly. I, I know how these people operate. I understand because I'm one of them. It's and exactly what's happening. Actually, I love it. I love it. Let's go. So I'm gonna go with. Uh, well, this isn't actually an EDM song, but I'd love to hear you mix it into an EDM song. Do you have anything by uh, Tom McDonald? Um, not off the top of my head, but I might. I mean, I have such a. I have a pretty extensive library <laughs> but okay, here's another, whatever song you're wanting we can get it um here's another one. we'll get it and send it to me what about the song the song is called the search by nf the search by nf yeah i know yeah. i know nf i used to be on uh i used to be on rap radio and we used to play quite a bit of, of nf stuff or his more hip-hop oriented stuff this is pretty hip-hop oriented too but it's really it, it's a really cool song with some pretty interest if you're if you're into the lyrics sure um, it's it's pretty interesting what it it talks about anyways um you can spin that into some medium yeah 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 what is it called nf uh what's the name of the song uh the search it's the called search. the search yeah producer john please nf just it's just the letters nf the yeah. search and then devin i don't mean to put you on the spot but if you got something i'd love to mix it in uh what am i doing song, song. request yeah uh you don't yeah. have to if you. I don't want to put you on the spot too much, but I can't think of anything right now. Let me see. Go, go with. Um, you can go with "I Wanna" by Jay Hardaway. There we go. Jay Hardaway, "I Wanna." Producer Jun, can we make that happen as well, please? Uh, hmm. I love it. All right, we're going to get those for you guys. And dude, fellas, this was awesome. Thank you guys so much for coming through in the club. It was great to have you guys, JD, Devin, Banky in the house, Nirvana Labs in the house, and Ignite Protocol. You heard the alpha here, and we're going to have you guys back when we're closer. We're going to do a demo when we're close to launch. Thank you guys so much for joining us today, and uh, we will catch you next time.